Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be doing the front brakes on this 2017 Honda Pilot. Uh, just be careful because the brakes are really hot, so you want to make sure they've cooled down before you work on it. And, uh, you know, perform at your own risk. I'm only just showing you how I have done this. Uh, first, we're going to come in and chalk the rear wheel since the front of the car will be in the air. Next, we'll lift, and it, as you can see, I have the jack a little bit farther back, so I can put a jack stand more towards the front. So make sure that it's uh, centered as you put it down and then give the car a nice little shake back and forth to make sure it's stable. We want the wheel just barely off the ground. So we're gonna take our 22 millimeter socket and remove the lug nuts. Uh, you can break these loose on the ground if you wanted to. Um, otherwise the wheel can spin a little bit if you're doing it with a breaker bar. We'll remove the wheel out of the way. And we come in and can see that these brake pads are completely flat. Next, we're gonna take our 19 millimeter socket and we're gonna find our brake caliper where it mounts and we're gonna remove both these bolts. So there's one here at the top and then there's one down here at the bottom. These can be on pretty firm, so you'll need a breaker bar. Luckily, the impact wrench fits in here pretty good. With both of these bolts removed, we're gonna slide the caliper off of the rotor and we want to have a bucket nearby that we can set this on. We don't want to hang it by the brake line. We'll now come in and pop the hood on the car. Open up the hood. This one has just a little prop stand here that we just put up into the little hole here. And now we're going to find the brake master cylinder reservoir here. And we're going to just twist the cap counterclockwise and then remove it. Now for the brake pads, we're gonna take the outer one and just push against it like this and it will pop out. There are some uh, clips that are in the top, just little wires that we'll be reinstalling later right here so you can just pull them out for now. We're gonna leave the other pad that's closest in there, bring in our C-clip and we're gonna use the pad itself to push the caliper back in. So this is why you have to have that brake uh, master cylinder reservoir cap off or you can't do this part. And so as we turn it in, I've sped up the footage. You can see we're compressing that piston back in. Uh, the other side uh, has a brake line in the way for the C-clip, so we're going to use this other tool. And I'll put links to these in the video description if you want to see where you can find these. And so we're just going to screw this one in. And uh, that plate eventually spreads out against the bracket. We're using the old pad again, so we're not hurting anything. And we're just twisting it until it comes in. You will notice the fluid level will rise and that's okay. Uh, it will go back down when we eventually pump the brakes. So just make sure it's not overflowing. Now we can remove our brake caliper tool and remove the brake pad, just pop it out. And you'll notice these pistons right now, they're still a little bit uneven. And what you'll notice is as you push one in, the other will come out a little bit. So you kind of want to just get it as even as you can. And as long as they're in, then we'll be able to get our brake pads in. So I kind of just went back and forth a little bit and evened them out the best I could. Now to remove the actual brake rotor, there is a Phillips screw that we're going to remove. We'll go ahead and take this one out. Now the rotor will be able to come off just like the tire. So just pull it right off. Next, we'll bring in our new rotor. Do your best to keep it as clean as you can. We're going to put some Loctite on the little screw and put it back in. Now we're gonna come and replace the clips, and these are very simple. Just take a screwdriver and pry them out. Uh, they are sharp, so be careful not to cut yourself. So you'll be able to remove these, and then you just wanna compare them to the new ones and make sure that they line up with the tabs and everything exactly the same. We're gonna slide the new one in. When we get it into position, it'll pop into place. And now we can move over to the other side and do the same thing, pop it out with a screwdriver, compare it, and then put it back in just the way that it came out. And so that should just pop right in too. Just look at all the tabs and make sure that they're going where they should be around the sides. Now we're gonna take our brake pads and you'll notice that they have this little piece that comes up. That goes on the inner side closest to the pistons. And so we're gonna get some high temperature grease and put it on the back side. And at this point, we can now slide our brake pad in. 
and they go in pretty straight. Uh, we're going to put the clips in in a minute, the top one. So we'll get both of these in and make sure that it's uh, spread as widely as it can. Now we're going to put Loctite on our uh, bracket bolts here. Next, we're going to take the brake caliper and we're going to slide it right back onto the rotor. Next, we're going to reinstall our bolts here. So sometimes you got to wiggle the caliper up and down a little bit to get it to line up. So now we're going to reinstall and torque these down. Now we're going to take out the caliper guide pin bolts with a 17 millimeter socket. So that's this top one and the bottom one. So we're going to remove one entirely, but then only loosen the other one. And so with the top one out and the bottom one loosened, we can slide this down and we want to keep the caliper touching the brake pad so that they don't spread when we put this clip in. And so as you can see, there's just a little hole in the very top of these pads. And so we just put the uh, pins in on each side. Should look like that. And now we can slide it back uh, into place and put the bolt back in. And then same thing on the bottom. Once this bolt's in, we can remove the bottom bolt entirely, slide it up so this part is still touching the pads so that they don't spread apart, and then put the uh, little pin in. Now we can close this back up. We're gonna go ahead and put Loctite on these bolts. We'll go ahead and uh, reinstall both of these, the top and the bottom. If you had the bolt back in just to hold it in place, we'll take it back out to put the Loctite back on it. Put it back in. Now, as we tighten this down, you'll notice that there's a little stopper here that keeps it from spinning. So just make sure that that's in place as we snug it down for the top and the bottom. Okay, top one's tight, bottom one's tight. Everything is in place. Go ahead and snug it back down, torque it down. Okay, we're gonna look at our brake master cylinder. At this point, we can uh, put the cap back on, just make sure it hasn't overflowed. And if the level's high, that's okay because we're gonna pump the brakes and push the fluid back down into the lines a little more. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the cap back on. We're gonna bring our wheel in. For me, it helps to sit on the ground and then just uh, barely lift the tire to line it up. I like to put one lug nut on and snug it down so the wheel is flat and then put the others in. Make sure you put these on by hand for the first few threads so you don't cross thread them. We're going to come in at 94 foot pounds. We're going to lower uh, the vehicles till the tire is just barely touching the ground so the wheel doesn't spin, but we don't want a lot of pressure on it. Now we're going to torque these down. We're using the star pattern here, so we're doing every lug nut that's across from the other one. And then we'll go through and uh, double check them as well one last time. Now we're going to go inside the car and pump the brakes, get that fluid level back where it should be. And then we can repeat and do the same thing on the other side. When you're all done, start the vehicle. Test the brakes that they work. And the first few times that you pump the, the pedal, it'll be a little squishy and then it should firm up. Just make sure that the fluid level doesn't drop so you don't induce air into the system. And remove your wheel chuck. So you're gonna wanna come and check the fluid level after pumping the brakes and after driving the car around a little bit. You'll want to periodically check the fluid level um, sometimes as brakes wear down and it requires more fluid, some's been added, so you might have too much. And then, uh, you know, sometimes there's not enough in there. So just make sure that the level is good as you drive it around uh, constantly. So thanks for watching. Please check the video description and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks, guys.